with Matt from Matt's Off-Road Recovery. We're gonna be getting some behind the scenes information from Matt today. Thanks for taking the time with us. We really appreciate it. So first off, tell us about who you are. What did you do before YouTube and what transitioned you toward oh, the YouTube stuff? Let's see. Before YouTube, I was a farmer, plumber, chef, electrician, and then roofer. I did roofing for 12 years. And what made you just get into this? This story is gonna sound really simple. And it is. One day I woke up and I said, I don't want a roof anymore. And I went and talked to my partner. I said, hey, you want to buy me out? And then after we made a deal, I went home and told my wife that I sold the roofing company. <laughs> Jamie's back here watching. <laughs> it was a really hard couple of weeks because I didn't know what I was going to do, but I just didn't know right. I was going to roof anymore. Then you bought a Jeep? Well, not not exactly that easy. We were just kind of sitting around a group of friends Sunday afternoon, and one of my friends that was there, he just said, you should start a towing company. I just got my car impounded two days ago, and it cost me $250 to get it out. And I'm like, I could do towing. And he says, well, the guy that impounded my car is selling his business. So that was on a Sunday. Monday, uh -huh. I called the guy. Thursday, we had a deal. The next week, I owned Winder towing? Well, not winder towing yet. I owned nothing except for a towing company's assets and I started Red Rider Towing. So that was in 2009. I didn't buy winder towing till 2013. So from there, how did you find the transition into off-road recovery? The off-road co calls would come in because that's who people call. They call a tow company. Most tow companies won't do it. I wanted to do them because I really wanted the, the work and I wanted to take care of my clients to call me. Right. I learned really rapidly why tow companies don't do that. I got some trucks buried in sand. I got them buried in mud. Even the ones that went successful, you're working your trucks hard, you're pulling sand into them. They're on-road trucks and you're taking them off-road. I knew that I was going to have to basically clean slate, not try to modify a tow truck to do off-road, but to just start over. The Jeep Cherokee was the first off-road vehicle I had and it was very stock when I started doing work with it. As I would find its limitations, I would come back and engineer a solution. The Banana here, it evolved into an off-road vehicle completely independent of the off-road industry. Okay, then from there, so you transitioned into off-road recovery. What made you decide to pick up a camera and start filming yourself doing that? So I've got these towing companies and I need to get my name out there and advertise them. So I'm using Facebook to do that. So I'd be like, hey, I'm picking up a Nissan with a bad alternator at Lynn's parking lot. And there's like seven likes and no comments. <laughs> and then the next video is like, I'm at Sand Hollow pulling out a 15,000 pound rig out of the sand with uh -huh. my Jeep. And it would get like 200 thumbs up and 75 comments. I was watching this happen. I'm like, on-road towing, off-road towing. It piqued people's interest oh, to see yeah. the off-road yeah. stuff. And a lot of the comments hinged around either, I want to see video of this, or it didn't happen, or there's no way you're going to get that out with that Jeep, or I would love to see that Jeep pull that out. So I'm like, well, we've got to do something about that. Right. I was getting input to do a YouTube channel from friends and family from multiple directions. I'd say a hundred a hundred different people right all right so can you give us a tease what's the next big thing for the channel is it going to be a sweet build is it going to be another <laughs> event like what's coming well we're still working on the record to get it finished we're still working on the more to get it finished the snow cat needs a complete overhaul. overhaul i've got a razor recovery rig that i've got in my mind that we've started we've actually bought a truck for it because off-road recovery is evolving when i got into this business there was no side by side right. to recover and now that is most of our work do you mind me asking what's the rig gonna be for the side by side well it's a secret at the moment okay it's, it's half baked let's put it that way so i don't want to put a half baked product out there for ridicule i want it to be three quarters baked and you'll still get ridicule i'll still get ridicule <laughs> but we'll go out there and get it done okay
Okay, so we just had the record games about a month ago, and that was a huge success, I think we all can say, both on YouTube and in person. Now that you've had some time to digest that a little bit, what have you learned? What do you want to do different? And can we expect to see another event like that in the future? All right, so yes, the record games was a massive success. We feel really good about it. You got the mayor happy, the sheriff's department happy, the park happy everybody that attended happy. We had nothing. There was no negative anything. And it was amazing, amazing event. But yes, we are planning on having an annual event. We haven't really settled in on exactly what it is because we're not going to do the same thing every year. Right. And we'd like to get the attendees ways that they could be involved in it. So yeah, we're just kind of brainstorming that. I think that's a perfect spot to be. Figure out what worked, change it a little bit because you can't do the same thing every year. But I like that. That's a good idea. But uh, after seeing Merlin come and I guess we could softly put it dominate the record games. <laughs> Does that change your stance on the matter? And when can we expect to see a Cummins in one of your build? All right, yeah. So diesels, yeah, I, I have been, I've been tagged as anti-Toyota, which I'm not, and anti-diesel, which I'm not. Right. Um, boy, that was a lot of questions. It's Woo! loaded, it's it loaded. It is a loaded question. Merlin's truck is amazing. Like that was, I'd never been around that truck. Merlin did awesome at the games, that truck. It's definitely got me rethinking diesel power for sure. So uh, you guys comment below if you think Matt should do a Cummins build on his channel. I think everyone would enjoy that personally. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure uh, the channel has become something that you probably didn't imagine it would become in, in, as far as size and production quality and the fan base that you've developed. Now that it's come to that point, does that change your outlook of what you want it to become in the future? Well, for me, what it's allowed me to do is do what I want to do, and that's fabricate uh, vehicles that solve problems. So as far as, as that's concerned, I, re I really like where I'm at right now. And you're right, I never anticipated this. I don't have to drive a tow truck anymore. This is my job now. Right. I would like moving forward to do more with the audience, like give them more opportunities to do what we're doing or partner with us in what we're doing. So that's kind of the direction we want to go with this. Okay, a little more audience involvement somehow. Yeah, and, and we do that with going to these shows. We actually did have a reporter interview us at a show that we did up at Salt Lake and they asked me what am I doing at this show to promote my business and I thought about it for a second and I said I'm not I'm here to meet and interact with my right. audience and we really enjoy that and people will ask do you get does it get older I bet you hate this and I don't hate it mm -hmm. I don't hate it I I look at each one of these people that come up and see us um, to, to meet us to get you know autographs or take a picture I see them as part of our team that's making this whole thing work So uh, we want to know what's been your most difficult or scary or just the worst recovery you've had to participate in that you've done on the channel. That one's hard to answer because every job is different and, and brings different challenges. Some of them are just miserable because of weather conditions right. or something like that. But the one that I always think of that was the most harrowing was a red rental Jeep up above Spanish Fork on the mountain there. His GPS had taken him up this trail. I don't even know, ATV trail? I don't know who yeah. cut that trail. This is not pleasant. Yeah, let's see, how does it feel? This is not good, I don't like this. There's not a lot that we've done that sketched me out. This is the worst. So anyway, he got, he got up around a corner and when you're going around the corner on a side hill like that, as you go around the corner, the back end slides down and you're able to go up. But when you decide to back up, that back end's not gonna slide back up to help you get around the corner. So he found himself in that position 
and we were on the side of that mountain for four hours with nothing to stop us, just steep angles. We were in the, the more of air here. And, and to my knowledge, there's been two full-size vehicles over that trail, a rental Jeep and the more of air. And then the spot Rudy came down is, it, oh. the camera does not do that spot justice. No, when he was coming down, cause he was coming down to put a winch on right. the front and I'd been hiking up and I saw him up there. I'm like, stop, stop. I didn't want him down there. We'd had three vehicles down there in trouble and he would have had to have turned around, which I don't know if that would have even been possible. I think we stopped him about one foot before. No there return. was no return. The relief, when we got up to the top where it leveled out, like I just got out and just stood on level ground and just soaked it up. <laughs> it was crazy. My palms are tingling right now just thinking <laughs> about that job. <laughs> Okay, so now a question, kind of two angles of this question. With your YouTube success, what's been the highlight of that process for you? And then what's been the biggest downside for you with that success? All right, let's start with a positive. I get to do what I want every day. I get to come out in my shop, which is something that I love. That's where I would rather be. If somebody's like, hey, I'll give you two week vacation, full paid, anywhere in the world. You got nothing to do. Where are you going? I'm like, oh, my shop. Yep. I'm going to my shop. So I really, really do enjoy fabricating, building, and, and engineering. There's that aspect of it. Also, we're in a position now where we can give back to the community for different specialized things. So we've had the opportunity to work with the Utah Food Bank, with the Dove Center. We've helped raise a lot of money for the All Abilities Park here in Hurricane, which is badly needed. Being able to do that and being able to work with the people and see it actually like go from an idea to changing people's lives for the better, that is really yeah, a building a foundation for the community that you live in. So then what's the dark side or the downside? The dark side. <laughs> so if your chickens get into your neighbor's yard and you're not a YouTuber, if they're really bad, they'll call the cops and the cops will come over and shoot the chickens back to right. your yard, whatever. If you're a YouTuber and your chickens get out, you're going to jail. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so everyone wants to use anything to take you for who you are. Yes, getting sued and threatening to get it sued, different levels of extortion, but let's just say that it gets litigious. So yeah, so that's one of them. Everybody knows you. There's newspaper articles and, and uh, YouTube, other YouTubers are like, the real dark secrets and, right. and, they, and they're not accurate. All right, Matt, thank you so much for your time. I think I speak for everyone watching this. Everyone enjoys getting to know you a little bit better, both on your videos and hopefully a little bit more behind the scenes on this video. We really look forward to that Cummins build that everyone's dying so, so much to see. Stay tuned. <laughs> so thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. Appreciate it. A little surprise for Matt when he comes to use the Morve. Have his crops. Good luck, you guys.